Saying no to life-saving health treatments is not easy. But priority setting in health is actually about saying yes to the right treatments and preventions and patient groups. Ethical principles for priority setting in health are helpful guidance tools when setting priorities for large populations. We may have strong intuitions on who should get the treatments if we have two, maybe three patients, but we, when we scale up priority decisions at the population level, we lose our gut feelings and moral intuitions. And that's why ethical principles are helpful to guide our decisions. We have three important ethical principles in uh, healthcare priority setting. All ethical theories would agree that they are relevant, but people and theories would disagree on how much weight we should assign to each, each of them. The first principle is about maximizing health. Where do we get the most bang for the buck? The second principle is priority to worse off. How can we get more equal distribution of healthcare services? And the third principle is financial risk protection, scaling up health services, giving priority to health services without inducing, without medically induced impoverishment or uh, increasing high out-of-pocket payments. So, what do we mean with health maximization? I can illustrate this with two dimensions. You can Imagine the square in the left corner is the total amount of population health you can get. And there are two dimensions to this, uh, how you maximize population health. You could either invest in what is cost effective, what gives the most bang for the buck, or you could give more to health. You could increase health budget, or you could give to uh, uh, an NGO that you know uh, works uh, in the healthcare system. So if we give more to health, increase the health budget, this is maybe the maximum you could get. However, if you use cost effectiveness methodologies, you would have much more high impact of the uh, dollars you invest in health. So using uh, standard methods for health economic evaluations are important if you want to maximize health, but also uh, giving more to health. The Disease Control Priorities Project uh, is important uh, globally when it comes to what health economics means in practice. There are three uh, uh, editions of uh, Disease Control Priorities, and now the fourth edition is uh, in, in publication, in, in work in progress. Here is an example of how you can use health economic evaluation. The information you get from a cost effectiveness study is, for example, how many dollars do you have to pay to get, for example, one disability adjusted life year in return? And disability adjusted life years or quality adjusted life years or life years are standard metrics used when you want to measure the value of the dollar you invest in cost effectiveness analysis. Other more disease specific measures could be used or you could measure the dollar per life saved. The advantage with dollies or qualies is that that can be used and you can compare across different specialities. For example, as you see here, the four interventions on the top is uh, treatment uh, of uh, antidepressants and we uh, antidepression uh, and we see that uh, and this is uh, based on uh, a comprehensive uh, cost effectiveness study in Ethiopia and we see that the cost effectiveness rate uh, for depression in Ethiopia varies between 600 and 1135 dollar per uh, disability adjusted life years we have also interventions for other mental disorders and also for epilepsy. What is interesting is that uh, if we look at management of epilepsy uh, with phenobarbital, the cost effectiveness rate is very low. It's down to $448 per disability adjusted life here. And it's almost uh, as cost effective as uh, 
obstetric and neonatal care, the interventions at the bottom. But we see that obstetric and neonatal care, that's where you get the highest bang for the buck. And all these interventions have what we call ICERs or incremental cost effectiveness rates below $250 per uh, dolly or disability adjusted life here averted. So if your willingness to pay is 300, it means you would have to say no to all uh, uh, mental disorders, neurological, neurological disorders, and uh, uh, cardiovascular disease interventions, except of antihypertensives. If you have a high risk for starting antihypertensive and statin treatment, for example, 35%. And then we see that the uh, cost effectiveness rate is $74 per disability adjusted life year. This is an example of how you can use cost effectiveness to rank order interventions and set priorities. However, health maximization is ignorant to the distribution of the benefits. Who gets it? It may be problematic to say no to mental disorders. Maybe some of the mental disorders occur early in life, for example, schizophrenia, and then we should uh, have a higher willingness to pay threshold for this. So, who are the worse off in terms of health? Now we move to giving priority to worse off principle or egalitarianism. It could be a univariate measure of worst off, uh, those having the lowest lifetime health. Uh, and then we mentioned schizophrenia. That may be an example of a very severe condition. Another way to measure worst off is to use a bivariate measure of worst off, meaning that we rank order interventions according to their income level, their education level, or uh, uh, according to area of residence. And we look at the inequalities in baseline health and then see how much do the poor benefit versus the rich, for example, or the highly educated versus the lowly educated. So one univariate uh, way to identify worst off and one bivariate uh, uh, way to measure worst off. Here is an example of how you could measure lifetime health. So uh, if you, uh, um, this is also from Ethiopia, and we have uh, almost 10 conditions where we have rank ordered the conditions according to the healthy life years that are lost over a lifetime. That means if you get a disease early in life and you die, you lose more healthy life years than if you get a disease late in life. For example, if you get, and the upper threshold is um, uh, relative to the age of the disease onset. So if you get a disease late in life, you will compare the uh, prognostic loss from the life expectancy of that age group. In the right column, we see the average age of disease onset for the different diseases, which is the starting point for measuring future health loss and also the uh, past uh, health uh, gains that these patient groups have uh, achieved. And we see that Alzheimer have a health uh, loss of 70 healthy life, 17 healthy life years compared to acute lymphoid leukemia with 51.2 healthy life years. So acute lymphoid leukemia, it's a much more severe disease if we measure it by health loss over a lifetime. A third principle is to reduce out-of-pocket payments. Uh, and this is important because out-of-pocket payments are a barrier to achieve access to healthcare. But it's also important in itself because they are a cause of financial burden. And we know that in countries with a um, low level of uh, what we call pooling of funds or uh, general tax or health insurance, um, they have often high out-of-pocket uh, expenses for services, and large pro uh, and this creates a risk to get uh, catastrophic health expenditures if uh, uh, one of the household members get uh, a severe disease. Here is uh, an example of the finan uh, financial risk of surgery uh, globally, and we see that the risk of catastrophic healthcare expenditure if you get a condition that requires surgery 
is much higher in sub-Saharan African countries and South uh, Asian countries than uh, what we see typically in uh, Europe and uh, in America. Moving from principles to criteria can be useful because principles are general and open for interpretations and it's not easy to apply ethical principles for priority setting to concrete cases. That is why we often use uh, criteria in the um, applied uh, priority setting. Uh, and we have three types of criteria for priority setting. We have what we call the acceptable criteria, criteria that everyone would agree are accept acceptable to use, but people would disagree on which how important they, one is compared to the other. And we have the unacceptable criteria that everyone would disagree, would agree on are not acceptable to use as basis for setting priorities. And we have the contested criteria where uh, everyone uh, or, or ethical theories and people would uh, disagree on how if they are relevant or if they should be used uh, for priority setting. So if we look at the acceptable criteria, we typically have the maximizing health criteria like cost effectiveness, effectiveness or the more evidence based medicine approach the quality of the evidence. And if we look at the priority to worse off criteria, it's the lifetime health loss or giving priority to disadvantaged groups. If we look at the unacceptable criteria, we mean uh, uh, saying no to uh, beneficial treatment based on the gender, sexual orientation, religion, race, social status or education because of their gender, sexual orientation and so on. Saying no because it has, uh, the intervention has slow effect or it benefits uh, disadvantaged groups can be considered acceptable, but saying no because of gender, sexual orientation, religion is unacceptable. The contested criteria are more difficult because here there are disagreements. Age, for example, some would say age is not relevant. Others would say we should give priority to the young or we should give priority to the old. Productivity is also uh, problematic. Some would say we should give high priority to productive age groups or some uh, employment groups because they are important for society to, uh, uh, for different reasons. Others would say we would then discriminate those that are not able to uh, be in productive jobs. Responsibility for health. Uh, is another one, disease burden, budget impact, and uh, the rarity of diseases is a sixth uh, criteria where there would be disagreements. And don't forget financial risk protection, the third principle we talked about. Uh, however, this principle is more difficult to apply when we are selecting interventions or giving priority to groups but it is an important uh, principle when it comes to implementation of uh, high priority services and, and, and to reduce uh, the out-of-pocket payments. Thank you very much. I am Shalane Johansson. I'm a professor at Bergen Center for Ethics and Priority Setting and also a medical doctor specialist in addiction medicine working at the uh, Hospital. Thank you.